This video is brought to you by Magellan TV. Discover a new type of documentary film experience with Magellan TV and its binge worthy documentaries. More about them in just a bit. The Empire State Building, 443 meters tall, it took over a year to build. Burj Khalifa in Dubai, currently the world's tallest building, at 828 meters tall, it took nearly six years to build. With Sky City, or Tang Kong Chengxi in Mandarin, Chinese construction company Broad Sustainable Building, a subsidiary of Broad Group, wanted to set a new record. Located in Changsha in China's Hunan province and measuring 838 meters tall, or 2,749 feet, the proposed skyscraper would not only have earned the title of the world's tallest, but they said they could build it in just 90 days. If that seems impossible to you, you wouldn't be the first to say so. In fact, you'd be in agreement with a number of internationally renowned structural engineers and architects. Unfortunately, we may never know because as of 2016, construction of Sky City has been postponed indefinitely. Nevertheless, Broad Sustainable Building insists their plans are not only doable, but that they'll go through with them sooner or later. When most people think of prefabricated buildings, they imagine Oklahoma trailer parks filled with vinyl-sided single-family homes that inevitably get sucked up by a tornado. However, with Sky City, Broad Sustainable Building wanted to take the same principles and use them to construct a massive tower at the unprecedented speed of five floors per day. <laughs> An unprecedented trailer park tower. <laughs> The building would have been constructed using prefab modules assembled in factories beforehand. The main reason Broad Group claimed that they could complete it in 90 days was because of this. Some 95% of Sky City would have been built this way, allowing Broad Group to just snap the pieces together like a Lego set at the construction site. This prefabrication itself wasn't included in the original time estimate and would have extended the total construction time to 210 days, which is still ridiculous. Because the modular prefabrication design favors steel over concrete, which has to be poured on site and therefore is more time intensive, Broad Group estimated that it would need 270,000 tons of steel to build Sky City. In comparison, the similarly tall Burj Khalifa used around 43,000 tons of steel. Broad Sustainable Building named their tower Sky City for a reason. At 220 stories tall, the skyscraper would have had over a million square meters of floor space. That's more than a square kilometer, or around 250 acres, bigger than the entire area of the Soho neighborhood in Manhattan. Comparatively, the Burj Khalifa, which is just 30 meters shorter, only has around 300,000 square meters, or over 3 million square feet. That's because Sky City wouldn't just have been tall, but it was wide as well. Rendering suggests that it would have been about twice as wide as the Burj Khalifa at its midpoint. With that much space, Broad Group wanted Sky City to have basically all the amenities and services needed in a city. Someone could have theoretically lived in the building and never have to leave. Specifically, 83% of the building would have been dedicated to residential purposes, with housing for over 4,000 families. Another 1,000 people could have stayed in the building's hotel, taking up 5% of the floor space. The apartments and hotel would have been located on the 16th to the 180th floors. Additionally, the first to fifth floors would have contained schools, hospitals, daycare centers, supermarkets, shops, and clinics, while the 181st to 219th floors would have featured restaurants with views of Changsha City. Residents and visitors would have also had recreation options thanks to six basketball courts and ten tennis courts. There would have been a number of helipads as well. Altogether, the building would have had a capacity for 30,000 people. Of course, the city is more than just houses and stores. You need transportation. Broad Group planned for people to get around their vertical city via 104 high-speed elevators. It's unclear exactly how fast these elevators would have gone since they were never manufactured, but if there'd been anything like the elevators in similarly tall megastructures, they may have reached speeds of up to 60 kilometers an hour, or about 35 miles an hour. Presumably, someone could have gotten from the bottom to the top of the structure in just a few minutes. Considering how many people commute for over an hour across their city to work via cars or public transportation, this does seem fairly efficient. Despite its massive size, Broad Group claims they could build their prefabricated skyscraper for pennies on the dollar compared to other megastructures. The building was estimated at around 9 billion RMB, or 1.6 billion US dollars. 
It might sound like a lot, but keep in mind that the Burj Khalifa, which is similar in height but has only about 30% of the floor space, cost $1.5 billion. In other words, while the Burj Khalifa cost around $4,500 per square meter, Sky City would have only cost $1,500 per. Additionally, Broad Group bought the land for the project, about 67,000 square meters or 16 acres, for 390 million RMB or 63 million US dollars. Well, not a bad deal, this was still a major investment for the firm. The same amount of land in New York City would cost an average of $83 million. Now, we will get back to today's video in just a moment, but first, a quick word from today's fantastic sponsor, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is an awesome documentary streaming service founded by filmmakers for the love of history. And with more than 3,000 excellent programs available on Magellan, it's really hard to stop watching once you start. They've got everything from the Greeks, the Great War, plus modern history, biographies, scientific profiles, true crime, and so much more. The team adds new content every single week. And what's one thing you love about paid streaming services? Of course, there are no ads. If you're ready to dive into the holiday season, you can head over to Magellan right now to check out one of their holiday docs, The Legend of Santa, which explores not only the history of Santa Claus, but how different cultures throughout the world have incorporated it. It's good stuff. And this holiday season, you guys can take advantage of a special deal with Magellan by clicking on the link in the description below. You can get a buy one, get one free deal on annual memberships. That way you can give the gift of Magellan while also getting a little something something for yourself. So let Magellan hook you and a friend up, you'll be glad you did. And now back to today's video. As their name would suggest, Broad Sustainable Building wanted to design Sky City with modern features that would have made it energy efficient and habitable over the long term while decreasing the per capita use of land. First and foremost, the design involved recycled materials in the construction process, none of which included aldehyde, lead, asbestos, or other chemicals known to cause health or environmental problems. Other important features were the 15 centimeters, 6 inches of insulation in the walls and the four paned glazed windows that would have helped keep the temperature inside the building between 20 and 27 degrees Celsius, that's 68 to 81 Fahrenheit, plus lighting in the building would have consisted of LEDs and the elevators would have been designed to generate electricity when ascending unloaded or descending fully loaded. These features would have saved a lot of energy over the long run. In fact, it was claimed that Sky City would use 80% less energy than conventional buildings. Additionally, the internal environment would have been clean and healthy even more so than outside. Specifically, a central vacuum system would have filled the air, removing 99.8% of PM2.5. PM2.5 is fine particulate matter, under 2.5 microns in length, that's widely implicated in both acute and chronic respiratory problems. However, despite the modern design and sustainable features, many critics question the safety and environmental friendliness of Sky City's design. Perhaps more dramatically, Bart Leclerc, now a head of studio for the Brewer Smith Brewer Group, the architects behind a number of glamorous buildings in the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, said he'd retire if the project were completed on time. Some people wonder if Sky City was ever a serious proposal at all, or rather just a publicity stunt for Broad Group and Changsha City. But it wasn't just the time frame that came into doubt. Many engineers expressed concerns about the integrity of the structure itself. Specifically, due to the design's focus on steel over concrete, the structure might have had a lack of stiffness. Winds could have caused the building to sway considerably, destabilizing it. Plus, many wondered about Sky City's ability to respond to emergencies. In addition to a theorized three hours of fire resistance, there would have been multiple fire escape routes and the helipads could have been used for evacuation. Still, some worried this wasn't enough to get the tens of thousands of occupants out of the building in the case of a fire, nor would there have been adequate means for rescue and firefighting personnel to reach its soaring heights. Lastly, the elevators might not have been enough to handle individual emergencies. Even though they would have had high speeds, the incredible height of the building would have meant that someone having an urgent health problem at the top would have taken several minutes to reach the hospital or doctors at the bottom. This could have prevented them from getting treatment in time. Broad Group announced that they'd received local approval for Sky City in October 2012. They then said they'd begin construction that November. Including prefabrication, the project would have taken 210 days, meaning Sky City should have been finished 
in June 2013. Obviously, that didn't happen. Groundbreaking didn't take place until July of 2013, with the China State Construction Engineering Company selected as the main contractor. The completion date was stated as April 2014, with the official opening ceremony that May or June, already a bit of a longer time frame than was initially proposed. However, shortly after groundbreaking, construction was halted because the project hadn't received proper governmental approval. Despite approval from Jiangsha City, the height of the building meant it had to get the green light from national officials in Beijing, which apparently hadn't happened. For several years, Broad Group claimed it was moving through the red tape of government approval and would be starting construction shortly, but observers noted that they still weren't even manufacturing the building modules off-site yet. By 2015, the foundation pits that had been dug during the groundbreaking were filled with water and being used by local villagers for fish farming. In 2016, the Sky City project received what many perceived as its final death blow. You see, the original building site was located in Henan Province's Days Lake Wetlands, the last wetland in Changsha and home to some 135 species of birds. One of these birds is the Siberian white crane, which migrates south from Russia to spend the winter in southern China. The Siberian crane is critically endangered, with fewer than 4,000 individuals left in the wild. Environmental activists believed Sky City would disrupt the crane's migration and nesting, further harming its population as well as that of other protected birds like swans, zimmer falcons, and cuckoo doves. After protests and petitions to the government, a no-construction zone spanning 200 square kilometers or 125 square miles was declared in the wetlands right where Sky City was supposed to go. While the media and most skyscraper fanatics seem to consider Sky City a dead and forgotten ambition, Broad Group hasn't given up so easily. Even in the face of many setbacks, the company stated in 2016, we will definitely build the tower. Images of the proposed building can still be found on their website and YouTube channel, and renderings produced in 2017 suggest that they've been looking for a new site, perhaps one closer to the waterfront. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe, and thank you for watching.